Praise the Lord and greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus. I am coming to you today in the fear of the Lord and the confidence that I have heard from the Lord. About the time that the shutdown began in our country, I received a word of direction from the Lord. The Lord began to deal with me concerning this pandemic and the necessary steps that would be required to turn the favor for the church. As you are well aware, the pandemic was not designed to be a judgment upon the world, but it would be a wake-up call to the church. It was with that in mind that the Lord gave me the blueprint, and that blueprint would be found in Joel 2, 15 through 17. In that passage, the Lord spoke through the prophet Joel and said to gather the people, sanctify a fast, and proclaim a solemn assembly. Then he states that the priest, the ministers of the Lord, were to weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach. The Lord said that he is confronting the mediocrity of his people, and that if he, they will repent, he will unleash upon them signs, miracles, and harvest the likes that they have never seen. But if they will not, he would give the harvest to another. It was while meditating upon this word, I was made to know that we have in our fellowship in North America around 12,000 ministers. The Lord directed me that if all 12,000 would fast together for one day and repent, that it would turn the tide in the favor of the church and it would dislodge principalities. There's a precedent for this in the word of God. When a nation was on the verge of destruction and demise, that a man by the name of Mordecai laid in the king's gate in sackcloth and ashes. When the queen sent soft raiment, he rejected it. Haman had built the gallows to hang the nation upon. And Esther said that the only way this would change is if the whole nation would fast and pray. I believe God is saying that he is wanting his people to repent on the behalf of their cities, their states, and the world. And in so doing, it will unleash the power of God upon our cities, our counties, our states, and ultimately the nation. In conclusion, I know that we live in a time where we go from one event to another, one celebration to another. And while of all of these things are in order in their proper context, this is not one of those times. The gallows are being built for our families. The gallows are being built for our churches, for our cities, for our countries, our state, and the nation. We've heard many messages and sermons on unity the last few years, and rightfully so, because we are desperately in need of unity in this hour. I was told one time that you'll never get ministry to 100% come together. It's hard to get the ministry to come together on anything. And while that may have been the reality and the context in which they live, I believe that this is different because this is a different reality. This is not just coming together for a rally, a campaign, or an event. This is an all-out assault on the purposes and schemes of the enemy. And by coming together and unifying for this moment, for this time, will cause Haman to hang upon his own devices. I tell you, God will see, God will hear, and God will manifest. God is asking, will we pray? Will we fast? Will we intercede? Joel 2 gives a promise that he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. But first, there must be a lamenting. There must be a presenting ourselves before the Lord. There must be the priests that will weep between the porch and the altar. And in quoting the prophet Joel, who knows if he will leave a blessing behind him.